Hey, thanks for tuning in. I want to talk about why I think you need a personal website, but not just why you need one. I'm going to teach you how to actually get one. So how to make one, get a domain and also what you should do with it. A quick thing to cover is people often think that building and having a personal website is expensive. You need a developer and you have to be someone who can code or you have to pay someone a lot of money. That's not the case at all. I'm going to show you how to do this really quickly, really cheaply and just make it fast to get up and running. Here are six reasons why you need a personal website. Reason number one is it's a great place to develop your own ideas, especially if you're a writer. It gives you a place to write and practice your writing. It's also a great place to feature your professional life. So it becomes an online CV. And again, if you're a writer or in certain other careers, this is really important because it gives you a way to put your work out there. And that's, as I said, incredibly important as a writer, do some writing and then you can share it on your personal website. Publishers, agents and potential readers are all going to come and look at this website. And if they can see some of your work, that is going to entice them. The other great reason to have a personal website is that it gives you lots of connections. As people come to your website and read your work, sign up to your newsletter and keep visiting social media channels, you're going to become connected with all these people who will eventually become potential readers. Number four is it's a great way to expose yourself to more potential opportunities. By putting yourself out there and putting your work out there, opportunities will tend to come and find you because people will be able to see your work and actually see your writing and the quality of your work. Ultimately, you will be able to monetize. So you'll be able to make money from your personal website. This is going to take some time because of course you have to first build up a readership but at that stage, you will be able to hopefully sell them your books because once you have that audience, if they like your writing and they like what you write about, well, chances are when you have a book, they're going to come and buy that. The final point is that really it acts as a serendipity vehicle. So this is a little bit harder to put a finger on, but what it means in general terms is that by putting your work out there, giving value to people, good things will come your way. And really that's just because you'll have more connections, more people will see what you do. And by virtue of that more uh, increased awareness, it's inevitably going to lead to more opportunity. So now that I've hopefully convinced you as to why you need a personal website, I'm going to talk to you about how to actually create that personal website. As I said before, you don't need to code. It's not going to be expensive. It's not going to take a huge amount of time. Most of these solutions will be really quick to get started with. So to break it down quite simply, you need a platform and then you need a domain. So a domain is quick and easy. We all know what a domain is. I have publishingpush.com and then I also have my own personal website, which I've recently started, which is patgw.com. And for that website in particular, I bought both of those domains. I happen to use GoDaddy, which is really quick and easy, but there are a huge number of domain services that you can use. There's also Google domains and I believe Namecheap as well. Namecheap, from what I've heard, will actually give a free domain, a free .me domain if you're a student. So if you're a student, take advantage of that. But for the rest of us, you know, there's, there's GoDaddy.com, which I have used. There's Google Domains. There's a huge number of places to actually go and buy a domain. They are cheap. Usually they cost around $10. Uh, most of these websites are based in America. And, you know, that's the equivalent of, well, these days, you'd be lucky if you get three coffees for that. So they're hardly expensive. You have to pay that on a yearly basis. But again, it's $10, you know, a year. It's not going to break the bank. And it just looks a lot more professional if you have a domain. Then when it comes to the platform, again, don't get scared or turned off by this. A platform is simply a place to host your website. So it's simply a place where your website lives. And there are a huge number of platforms. There is Square that you've probably seen advertised around the internet quite a lot. There's Wix 
and then there's Ghost or, or other platforms that are really good. I would steer clear of things like WordPress, they're more advanced. They give the impression they're relatively easy, but in my experience, WordPress and, and some of those more advanced platforms are actually quite complex. Whereas Wix, Squarespace, Ghost, platforms like that, they are as simple as sign up to the website, click, click, you know, it's all drag and drop. They're really straightforward to get going with. Um, and they literally guide you through step by step. So make a heading, make a subtitle, you know, it's really foolproof and it just takes a little bit of time. But really within a couple of hours, if that, you could have a website up and running on Wix or Squarespace. So I'd recommend checking those out. I'm not gonna go into all the detail because as I say, those websites, they actually just are step by step. They coach you through the process so you can't really go too far wrong. You do have to pay for Wix and Square. And so if you really want to get started on a budget, so if you say, Patrick, I have absolutely no money at all. I can't spend a penny. I can't afford, you know, $10 a year on a domain or some of these solutions. I think they are $13 a month for something like Square. They could be a little bit more, a little bit less. Sometimes you'll get a deal. But again, these days, that's maybe you know four coffees a month or something like that. So if instead of having four coffees out, you forego that and you pay for your monthly Square or Wix uh, subscription, that's gonna be a great deal uh, of more benefit to you. But if you really don't want to spend any money at all, then I'd advise having a look at something like Substack. That's actually what I use for my personal website, the patgw.com website. It is again, really quick and simple. It's completely free. It's not a website per se. All you can do there is create a post and then have a email newsletter, but it's so quick and easy. You know, it took maybe 10 minutes and I was up and running. So now that you have got your website, you've got it set up on one of these platforms, you've added a domain name, what do you do with it? Well, it's time now to write and create content. So you need to create content, of course, for the website. And this is often where people get stuck and they say, what should I create? What should I write about? And the truth is that you really just want to draw from your own experience, the things you're learning about, the things you're working on. So for example, on my personal website, I will write posts about cryptocurrencies or about writing or about marketing because these are all things that I'm either doing or learning about and so I want to share my learnings on that website. The same thing with publishingpush.com. Of course we share tips for writers, authors, publishing tips, book marketing tips, all these kind of things because that's very relevant to our audience but it's also what we do on a daily basis, what we're constantly learning about. So have a think about what you personally know, what you're learning about and what you're interested in. If you've enjoyed the video today, please be sure to leave us a like, comment below with any other topics you'd like us to cover or questions that you might have. Turn the notification bell on when you subscribe and I look forward to seeing you in future videos. I am now gonna go back and chase the dog who has been pulling apart all the cables from underneath all the desks and everything. So um, thanks for watching. I will see you in the next video.